and so ends another Minnesota Vikings preseason. So yeah, let's go ahead and give the final thoughts on this preseason, the game, and just sort of general thoughts moving forward. And today will be brought to you by Sam Adams Oktoberfest. Pretty good stuff. So yeah, Vikings did end up making it a game in the second half thanks to guys like Perry Nickerson, uh, A.J. Rose was a stud, Kellen Mond definitely looks like the future for this team, I mean Amir Smith-Marset basically solidified himself on this team, looks like he's probably going to be the returner, at least kick returner at this point, and uh, K.J. Osborne definitely stepped it up. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> all in three in preseason. Again, you can't necessarily take that, you know, take that as you will. But it just because you win every preseason game doesn't mean you're going to win any games in the regular season. Just because you lose all your preseason games doesn't mean you're going to lose every game in the season. So it's just like, at the end of the day, what does the team look like? You know, because again. Going up against the Kansas City Chiefs, which, jeez, I mean, I knew they were good, but holy, I mean, they're a well-oiled machine from top to bottom, and that, uh, Gore, Derek Gore just absolutely carved us tonight. I mean, he's gonna be, a. Uh, I have a feeling he's gonna be like that boom, sort of like an Alexander Madison type for the Chiefs, which... Honestly, considering they're a team that has a lot of speed and a lot of, you know, trickery and stuff like that, it'd be kind of a nice addition to, you know, just have a guy that can, you know, batter you up the middle. So, yeah. But anyway, kind of wrapping up some thoughts here on this preseason. Oh, boy. <laughs> Obviously, uh... I think the elephant in the room here is we definitely need to pick up some more line depth. We could, we definitely need to take a look at a backup quarterback because I don't know if I trust Mond or Browning to start multiple games. Especially Browning. Oh boy. I don't know. He just looked so off. Like, just in general, this entire posts or like this entire preseason which is i mean it <sighs> especially considering he was one of the bright spots when you know the rest of our quarterbacks went down with covid or at least were you know under the covid protocol which thankfully as of now knock on my laptop here is the only real instance we've had when well it just sounds like the tennessee titans are adding more and more players because mike Vrabel did test positive and Oh, boy. But anyway. <laughs> and then, of course, also quick, you know, thoughts and prayers down there. Hurricane Ida could potentially hit the Gulf Coast. And, well, we all know what happened with Katrina and all that stuff. Ironically enough, like 16 years ago. But, oh, boy. Anyway. So, kind of, you know, a little bit of just NFL news in general, too, though. But kind of tying this back with the Vikings here, um. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's one player, though, that I'm surprised we didn't see at all, and I'm wondering what the hell's going on with this. Nate Stanley. I don't think I've seen him throw a pass for the Vikings since he's been, well, drafted by the Vikings. Like, I mean, I know he was a late pick, but at the very least, I... I would have thought that you would have at least thrown him out for even a series, just to kind of see what you have there, but... Oh, man, like, I, what's going on there? Like, is there something we don't know about, or what, but... Not seeing Nate Stanley at all kind of surprised me. At the very least, just to see what we have, but... I'm, I suppose probably within the next few days or so we'll find out why or what's going on with that. But, yeah, I mean, 
<laughs> this is it, boys. Now it's on to Cincinnati, and now it is on to the real deal stuff. Now, again, don't be surprised if the Vikings do at least take a look at some of the players that, you know, hit the waiver wires, hit the, you know, trade mills, and this, that, and the other thing, but... You know, it's just, oh boy. Now I will say, when I met you, it's just that 3-14 and 14 prediction. Again, take it with a grain of salt because as a Vikings fan, hopefully that's just an overreaction, but that's why it's always so hard to predict this team because there's tendencies, and if we fall under certain tendencies... Well, then the team will go a certain direction that I've noticed, you know. But all I know is if we start off like we did last year or if, you know, crap hits the fan or whatever, you know. Let's just say next year could be an all-new team and an all-new start and, well, or potential rebuilding. So... Who knows? I mean, I'm not going to, you know, predict one way or the other at this point, but <laughs> all I can say is buckle up and hopefully have a few of these lying around because, oh boy. Regardless of what happens, it's going to be a fun ride, so <laughs> again, stay tuned because, uh, if there's any big things that happen, you know, obviously the cut down is Tuesday already. So, I have a lot of players to cut down over the next several days from, was I think, like 80 to 53 or something like that. And then, interesting to see who ends up on the, you know, practice squad. So, I'll give my thoughts and opinions on that as, you know, that happens or becomes a thing. So, but, yeah, I mean... Until we meet again, this is Jacob, Skull Vikings. Let's just, please, let's just hope that uh, <laughs> this thing doesn't go to hell in a handbasket because I've seen many seasons go to hell in a handbasket. And, well, yeah, so, cheers. <laughs>